So in the previous video, I talked about the standard form of the equation of a line, what's referred to as slope intercept or y equals mx plus b form. An easy way to go back and forth between the equation of a linear equation and the graph of a linear equation. y equals mx plus b form is awesome. Slope intercept form will be used a lot. But it's not the only useful way to express a linear equation. There's another form that's referred to as point slope form, which is also really useful. Much like slope intercept form, where we learn how to go from the equation to the graph and from the graph to the equation, with point slope form, we can go in both directions. As the name kind of implies up here, our equation is gonna give us both the slope and the y-intercept. As the name implies down here, our equation is gonna give us the slope and then some other point on the graph, not necessarily the y-intercept. So when you're in a case like what we see right here, where you can't tell exactly what the y-intercept is, right? It looks like at some point between two and three, I don't know, like two and a half, no, nah, it's a little bit lower. Maybe it's like two and a third or, or 2.4, 2.3576, who knows, right? It's some value in here, but I can't tell what the y-intercept is, so how could I possibly come up with the equation? Well, looking at this, I can tell that the graph goes through the point 4, 1. So I already have a point which is necessary for point slope form. The only other thing that I need is the slope of this line. But fortunately, we learned in the previous video how to recognize the slope of a line. All the slope of a line is, is the change in the y-coordinate divided by the change in the x-coordinate. So if I take advantage of the given point and any other point on the graph, it doesn't matter which one, I'm going to choose one that seems to have integer coordinates. This point right here looks like it has an x coordinate of negative 2 and a y coordinate of positive 3. But you didn't have to choose this point. Any point on the line will do. All I have to do to figure out the slope is think about how much I have to rise to get from this point to this point divided by how much I have to run to get from this point to this point. The difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates. It appears if I'm starting here and wanna travel here, I'm gonna go down two units, and then I'm gonna to go to the right by six units. The y coordinates go from three to one. In other words, they change by negative two. And the x coordinates go from negative two to four. In other words, they change by positive six. The slope is always equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. So since the change in y was negative two and the change in x was six, my slope is negative two sixths. In other words, negative one third. With point slope form, we need to know a point and the slope. We were given a point and now we know the slope. We have everything that we need. Just like slope intercept form is typically written with the letters y equals mx plus b, point slope form is typically written with letters, except those letters are now y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. If you have a hard time remembering this, you can kind of think that encoded in here is the slope formula. If I divide both sides of the equation by x minus x1, I would have y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 equals m. The change in the y's divided by the change in the x's gives me the slope. Slope is rise over run. So if you can remember this, just think you're multiplying the denominator over here to the top of the right side of the equation, and that gives you point slope form. Again, to reference slope intercept form, there were two parameters, the m and the b, that I needed to figure out numeric values for. Down here, there are three parameters, an m, an x1, and a y1. Conveniently, m is still used to represent the slope, just like it was used to represent the slope up here. Since I've solved for the slope, I already know that the slope is equal to negative one-third. If I'm gonna to try to write my equation in point slope form, instead of writing an m, I'll write a negative one-third. There's still a lot of letters floating around, but it's not as bad as it seems. Just like up here, we left the x and the y as an x and a y, they're variables in our equation. Down here, we're gonna leave the x and the y as x's and y's. They'll be variables in our equation. So all that's left to do is fill in x1, y1. What is x1, y1? Well, that's the point in point slope form. You take any point on your graph, since they started me out with 4, 1, I'll use that one. That point is gonna have an x coordinate, we'll call that x1. And a y coordinate, we'll call that y1. So instead of writing y1 here, I'm gonna write the number one, I got y minus one. 
And instead of writing x1, I'm going to write the number 4. I got x minus 4. From this graph, I can come up with this equation. And this equation, even though it might not look like it, is a linear equation that represents this graph. We could be done right here. If our goal was just to come up with an equation that represents this graph, we're done. Here it is. But as I mentioned before, often we want the equation that represents the graph to be solved for y so that we can represent these as linear functions, not just linear equations. So what I would typically do down here, this is the point slope form, which I was able to come up with directly from this graph. However, I probably wouldn't stop here. I'd probably solve this equation for y to get it into slope intercept form. So on the left side of the equation, I got y minus 1. And on the right side of the equation, I could get rid of these parentheses by taking the negative 1 third and distributing it through. So I would have negative 1 third x, and then negative 1 third times negative 4. A negative times a negative is a positive, And 1 third times 4 is 4 thirds. So now to get the y all by itself, I add 1 to both sides. I get y equals negative 1 third x plus 4 thirds plus 1. But 1 is 3 thirds. So plus 4 thirds plus 3 thirds, in other words, plus 7 thirds. This equation is equivalent to this equation, which is equivalent to this equation. But this last one in this green box is a useful form of the equation. This is slope intercept form. The value of m is negative 1 third, the same as it was over here. And the value of b is equal to 7 thirds. So my y intercept should be at 7 thirds. 7 thirds is the same as 2 and 1 third. Oh, right, it's in between 2 and 3 here, 2 and a third. Once more through this whole process, less talking about why things work and just showing how they worked. Suppose I gave you this graph right here. You recognize that it's a linear graph, and you want to know what equation represents this graph. Your default is probably to think y equals mx plus b. Your default is to think about slope-intercept form. But again, we have the problem that it's unclear what b is equal to. You might think it's negative 1 and a half. But it's actually not. A downside to graphs is they're kind of approximate, and sometimes it can be hard to find fractional values. What could you do? Well, you could take advantage of two points that have integer coordinates, 6, 1, and 11, 3 in this case, and you calculate the slope based off those points. To get from this point to this point, it looks like I go up by two units from 1 to 3. And then I go right by five units from 6 to 11. So the slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. The slope is 2 fifths. But I can't tell what b is equal to, so I can't jump straight over here into slope-intercept form. What I instead want to do is use point-slope form. For point-slope form, I need the slope, which I already have, and any point on the graph. It doesn't matter which one you use. You can use 11, 3, or 6, 1, or any other point that you see here. I'll arbitrarily choose 6, 1 as the point that I'm going to use. If I'm using this point, then x1 is equal to 6, and y1 is equal to 1. And those values, in conjunction with the m being equal to 2 fifths, gives me everything I need for point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y1 is equal to 1. So I have y minus 1 on this side of the equation. m is equal to 2 fifths. So I have 2 fifths times x minus x1, which is equal to 6. This graph is represented by this equation in point slope form. And if my goal was to get this into slope intercept form, all I'd have to do is a little bit of algebra. Take the 2 fifths and distribute that through the parentheses. I got y minus 1 equals 2 fifths x minus 12 fifths, 2 fifths times negative 6. And then add 1 to both sides of the equation. On the left, I just have a y. And on the right, I would have 2 fifths x minus 12 fifths plus 1, or minus 12 fifths plus 5 fifths, or minus 7 fifths. From the graph, I get the point slope form of the equation, which I can then algebraically turn into the slope intercept form of the equation, which I can verify by going back to my graph. Right? It looks like the slope is rise of 2 over run of 5. And it looks like the y-intercept is around negative 7 fifths, right? Negative 1 and 2 fifths. Negative 1.4 is what this point ends up being at. Not to beat this to death, but I don't want to make another video on this. So what I want to do is give you an example to finish this video up with. It's this question, which is going to be really useful later on in the class. And it kind of combines some things that we've learned in the previous couple of videos. We're talking about functions, specifically linear functions. 
And we want to find the equation of the function. So f of x equals something. We want to figure out that something. What information do we have? We know that f of 3 is equal to 2. And we know that the slope of this linear function is negative 4. And with that information, I want you to figure out what is the linear function. If you want to pause the video and give it a shot, go right ahead. Otherwise, I'll just shut up and kind of put the answers up here so that you have something to follow.